What are the best ways to build plot twists? I think you just have to find what's organic to your story. You know, I, I do think you need to surprise the reader. I do try to, um, you know, sometimes when I think of a scene, I'll try to think, okay, this is the way the scene would go, but what if we went this way instead? You know, like I haven't seen that. But I also think you need to be really honest with yourself when you're doing that. Like, does this work better? Like, because just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it works, you know? And I, I, do, I would rather be effective than novel, in my opinion. I mean, sure, it's good. I, I do try to create new things. And I do try to go in unexpected directions. But if you're going in a direction that's not satisfying, I, I think you're sort of uh, you're writing for yourself and not for your readers at that point. You know, I mean, I, as an example, I wrote a, a short story once about a, uh, a guy who uh, is a werewolf. And every time the full moon comes out, he chains himself up in the basement and he like tranquilizes himself, you know, and so that he won't hurt anyone. And then, you know, he has this whole process of how he gets out of it the next day. And then one day he does all this, but someone is still like mauled, you know, in the town he's in. And so it's sort of, he's sort of trying to figure out, well, how could this have happened? I know I was chained up. I know I did everything. And he's like trying to figure out what's going on. And when you get to the end of the story, you find out there's another werewolf, you know, that came to town. And to me, I thought that was really cool. But I remember one of my friends read it and was like, oh, you know, I was kind of disappointed because I really was... I wanted to see how he figured out how to get out. You know, like I thought that was going to be the whole thing that like maybe the wolf side of him is becoming smarter, or, you know, something like that along those lines. And I had never even thought about that, but I, it just made me think that, you know, for him, he found that story unsatisfying. And I think it's better to satisfy the reader when you can than just be different, you know, just for the sake of being different. You said you'd rather be effective than be novel? Yeah, I mean, I'd rather the scene works and that the reader enjoys it and feels something from it than to be different just for the sake of being different. You know, I mean, you can, it's, and sometimes it can be easy to be different in a very cheap way. You know, I mean, if, you, if you're writing a, a spy thriller and you get to the end and the hero just fails, you know, like, sure, that's different, but it's probably not very satisfying to the reader unless you make that failure you know, mean something or matter or lead to something else that's interesting. But if it's just like, oh, you thought this would happen and instead this happens, but there's, it's disconnected from everything else or it's not satisfying to the reader, I think that that's being novel, but you're not being effective. You're not, you're not satisfying the reader. You're not presenting a, a, a compelling story. End every chapter on a cliffhanger or a surprise ending? Mm, I, I, if you can, without it being forced, I and mean, I always try to. You know, I think you, your goal with the end of the chapter is to make the reader read the next chapter, right? So uh, cliffhanger is a really good way to do that, but it's not the only way. I mean, I think even if you've sort of resolved the drama of that scene, you can sort of give a hint, you know, that, yeah, he got through this, but there's more coming or things aren't as safe as they seem. You know, you just, I think you always just try to leave with a little bit of, I don't know what to call it, not really a cliffhanger per se, but just a a sense of danger, kind of like what you were saying before, like that kind of mood that, yeah, he survived this, but he's certainly not safe. You know, if there's, you're, the, the story's still moving. Would you put like a surprise revelation to something that keeps people a little bit on their edge of their seat, but curious? I think actually one of my editors said what I tend to do, and they, they, were, they like this, like, oh, I like the way you end chapters, is I usually just try to find something sort of symbolic in the language that might be a little sinister. Like, you know, if, if they've just gotten through a big red car chase and it's sunset, you know, I might say, you know, the sun dripped red blood across the sky as they vanished into the horizon or something like that, you know, where it's, it's not really literally implying anything, but it just gives you this sort of mood of uh, danger, you know, and, and I remember an editor had said, oh, I really like the way you end your chapters with these kind of visual cues of, of something sinister, you know. And how do you start the chapter? Each chapter varies. Yeah, I mean, I just think, I think you tr you want to try to get in late and get out right at the right time. You know, I mean, I, I try not to spend too much time with exposition. I mean, you need a little, but I try to do the bare minimum. Uh, and I just try to start, I mean, it sounds kind of silly to say, but I just try to start where it's most interesting. You know, I mean, if, if, if two people are in an argument you know, I don't necessarily need to see what led up to that argument. I just want to start with the argument. You know, if they're 
arguing about whether they should, you know, send someone into this territory to get an agent out. You know, I don't need to see the girl walk up, you know, go in the elevator, walk into the office and sit down for the briefing and then get into the argument. I just want to start with the argument. You know, should we go in and help this guy or not? You know, that's the point of the scene. So I think that kind of comes down to knowing what the point of the chapter is. I mean, I do think that every chapter should have a reason for being there. And when I say chapter, it's kind of interchangeable to me with scene. I tend to write one scene per chapter, but not everybody does. So, you know, each scene needs to have a reason. If the reason is exposition, and sometimes that's necessary, I think you need to make it as short as possible, as quick as possible. Like give them what they need to know and move on. Is that something you've perfected over the years? Because, you know, in the beginning, we just want to sit down and just pour all of this out. And <laughs> I don't know if I'd say I perfected it. I mean, I think I was always aware of it because like I said, I'd written screenplays and things beforehand. And I do think screenplays kind of teach you to be very economical, you know, with your language because you're so constrained by time. Um, so I don't think I necessarily had a huge problem with it, but I do, th I will say that, you know, writing that first book, I definitely, would be more inclined to add things because I'm like, oh man, I don't know if I can make it to 80,000 words or 100,000 words, you know, whatever in my head it was going to be. So I'm like, all right, I'll talk about this, you know, and I would sort of go off on tangents. I, I you know, I think through editing, most of the excess there was trimmed back. Um, but I don't, even then it wasn't, you know, massive. I mean, the, I think the difference between the finished edited book and the original manuscript was probably like maybe 10 or 12%, you know, so it wasn't a huge amount. But I do remember that sense of, I don't know if I can write this many words, like I better talk about this and talk about this, you know, and, and, I, then, and then when you do it, you realize, oh no, it's like, I actually don't have room for all that. I gotta get to the point, like, you know, cause, and move on. How important is setting up clues? I think it, I mean, it certainly depends on what you're writing. If you're writing a mystery, it's super important. Um, my stories, I wouldn't say they're really mysteries per se. Um, they tend to be more about kind of this journey that King goes on in each one, you know? So it's, I don't think it's like, he's not necessarily trying to find out, you know, who killed, you know, suspect A or something like that. It's more about, you need to go find this guy and kill him, or you need to go find this guy and get this laptop that he has. And I tend to somehow connect the goal to something that happened in his past. So as he goes on this mission, he's sort of reflecting on, something in his past that troubles him or that you know that he failed or that uh, is a source of guilt for him so they're sort of if not directly linked then kind of metaphorically linked if you're writing a mystery you know obviously the clues are really important but i think in any case whether you're writing a mystery or even with me with where i've you know sometimes i have a scenario where there's a double agent you know and and you know someone is revealed to not be who you thought they were and usually that's planned out, but there have been instances where I've been writing a scene and I've thought, you know, this would just be so much better if this person was the traitor, you know? And the great thing about writing is you can always go back and add in, seed in those clues, you know? So if that's why I said like before, it's good to divert from your outline sometimes and surprise yourself. There's nothing stopping you from going back where you introduce that character and maybe add in something that makes them seem a little shifty or add in a motive that, you know, you didn't have before. You know, I think people tend to think of writing uh, linearly, and for the most part you do, but you know, there's nothing stopping you from jumping around and changing things.